Underdog Fantasy is the best and easiest place to play fantasy sports and their pick'em game. Sign up now with Code Poodle to claim your special pick plus a first time deposit offer up to $250 in bonus cash. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Poodle back with another CFB 25 Dynasty Mode video. And in today's video, I'm gonna be going through my favorite recruiting methods that I've come across in CFB 25. Before we get into the video, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up, comment down below if you have any questions, and of course, sub if you're new. And if you haven't already, check out Underdog down below. The link will be in the description. If you use my code, you can get up to $250 in your first deposit. So after playing the game over the last few weeks or so, recruiting, playing a ton of different dynasties, online, offline, testing things out, going through, getting classes, one star program, two, three, four, five, etc. I've come across quite a few things that give me an edge against other people that I recruit against, and it's super, super helpful. I've also found an edge with getting the best class, like efficiency. That's always my thing, right? Being efficient, officially putting together a class, using your points properly, using your scouting points properly. And I'm gonna go through all of those methods with you today. The first thing that I do want to go through only because it prefaces everything. If you don't set this up first, you're going to be doing it wrong is making sure that your coach is recruiting based and also going through and seeing what they have. For instance, when you go into here, recruiter, you'll notice that you get an advanced look at D line, linebackers, secondary, etc. These are going to be positions that you actually do a better job of recruiting. So you do kind of want to focus on these initially. And if you do create a custom coach, make sure you are building in the direction of recruiting. This gives you such an edge. And then for coaches like the Georgia coach, you go up to program builder and CEO, you will see some that actually do apply to recruiting. So I just want to preface this now because some people may go through their, their dynasties and not be focusing enough on these and noticing how to like leverage your coach abilities. So make sure you're doing that because that does really play a big role in what you do. But beyond the coach abilities, you're going to come over to recruiting, right? What do you do week one? offer it first thing i always like to do no matter what is break the calculator out i cannot stress this enough and i get it get a notepad break the calculator out like i keep saying times the 35 by five that's how many scholarships you can offer in one week but the 35 scholarships times the five is 175 that's how many points you will need now i do like to keep a little bit even extra than that now because i'm going to show you what i'm going to do next which is going to be to try another method here but by doing that you may actually waste a few five point scholarships here and there as you do work your way through so i'd really recommend at least saving bare minimum 250 to 30 and then you could you're going to end up using it but make sure you save it because the worst thing you could do is go through scouts set up your whole board and realize that you overdid it and you can't even offer all your scholarships and week one is so important that's part of this too right one of the best methods week one is so important if you mess up week one it greatly hurts your class in terms of guys you're going to try to fight for. So make sure you get week one right. Never just skip through week one. So with that being said, once you have it calculated what you're going to need, you're going to come over to prospect list. You're going to want to come over to prospects and sort by five star prospects. And you're going to want to add every guy on the board all the way up until about the fourth spot. After the fourth spot, it's going to be a lot harder to win some of these and you'll see why. Obviously, compare interest. If you go through these, you may notice that you're pretty close or it's it's kind of tight, but honestly, this is where I would probably stop. And for the four stars specifically, you're going to want to really just add the first, the guys who you are in first for, and I'll explain why in a second, but it's mainly because you want to be efficient with your points and also go for the insta recruitments. So as you see, Georgia has quite a few, and this is going to play quite a big role when you do this, but this is very important. And this goes for all programs, right? Every program is going to have some that you have first interest in. You want to add those guys to your board. For the five stars, you're going down to the threes. For the four stars, you want just the first one. So the reason being is when you are doing this, first there's the instant recruitment, which I'll get to in a second, but mainly it's because when you do, when you fight for guys in first, you're going to easily be able to expand this method into being able to efficiently use your points because you won't have to fight as hard for these guys. It means you can, you can cast a wider net essentially and really just push people out of the fight. So week one, we have all of our guys on the board. Now, once you get to the screen, you are going to want to scout these players that you have in first. Now, here's the thing. The five-star players, if they are your first option, even if they're kind of a bust, you may still want to keep them on the board. But this is where it's going to vary. If you're able to say a four to five-star program, you can go ahead and scout these players. If you're like a one to three-star program, be very vigilant with your scouting. Only scout the players you absolutely need to know. If you're a one to three-star program and you have a chance at a five-star, you're taking them. No matter what, because it's going to improve your classes, it's beneficial to get them. But if you're a four to five star program, you don't need to accept every five star you see. So keep that in mind. So as a four to five star program, I would definitely go ahead and start to scout some of these five stars and just see what you're dealing with. Like this guy, for instance, eh, maybe we don't need him. You could try the instant commit method if you want on them. But in general, I would scout if you're a five star team, if you're a four star team, if you're below a three star, you're taking these five and four stars, no matter what. If they want to come to your school, you're taking them. So keep that in mind. But as a five star program, what I would do is, by the way, in terms of 
the four stars if you saw here we had a lot more four stars than at first interest if you're a top top school like a five star school scout the four stars because you're gonna want to see which ones are gems and normal remove all the red gems and go add the additional ones that were not that we didn't take on the initial list if you see here we go over to four star prospects if you go to interest and you sort there was plenty of guys down here that we didn't pick now remember if you're using a school like a three or a lower four star school that has less interest you're going to just do them all because that's the ones you're, that's the ones that are available to you right you may not have the cream of the crop and you may not be able to have your choice so once you've established who you want to scout i'm going to show you guys the insta commit method here so when you go up to the top of this list and you start trying to offer scholarships you oftentimes have the chance to actually get an insta commit off rip from a player that your first interest on and your interest seems to be about halfway i would say closer to like three quarters when it's closer to three quarters you have a chance in insta commit so i'm going to scroll on down here and show you guys some of the insta commit opportunities such as these any ones that you're not in first in you don't have to try the insta commit method on because I, I don't believe it will work if you're not in first so we keep scrolling down and keep offering some up here going to make sure i show all the interest so you guys have an idea right there above half right above half steve abram is an insta commit now hold on as i keep going through as i'm going to tell you the importance of these insta commits beyond just getting talent right there is a big thing there's a big key here to bolstering your class beyond just like oh yeah you got an insta commit that's another one right there we were in first we were above half so that's two now so let's keep moving it down we got none there another scholarship right there keep moving it down now with these insta commits as you just saw that that was a weird lag you just saw there we're now down to three if we keep moving hopefully we can get at least four on this method so there we go there's four right there keep moving it down and do we get a fifth on the last one no okay okay so we got one two three four we got a total of four here now why is this important right why is getting these insta commits important you're probably just saying to yourself oh it's important because you got a four star talent it's important because this greatly greatly bolsters your class look at this you're now at 78 points which is already a pretty is like pretty good points right? 100 points there's some classes out there that may not even hit that or they'll, they'll finish near there right 78 points you have four four stars from this point on you have set the foundation so far above everyone else like everyone else on level zero you're on you're on the fourth story you are ahead of everyone and now keep in mind this your hours now are available so instead of having to fight for those players or instead of having to allocate 30 to 50 points to them each week you now can go allocate all your points across so let's say you did this as a five-star school remember this changes as a lower tier school it's super important because now if you did get some auto commits which can be a lot harder if you did get some you now can use your very limited hour towards other things now for a top tier school let's say you offered 50 and a team like georgia that has 1250 or going to the next week let's say is 1100 divided by 50 would be 22 players you can put max 50 full pitches on right plus those four you essentially have 26 guys that are fully being uh allocated resources to that means that almost your entire class can get the full asset allocation of your resources that is so huge so that was the first part of it right? that was getting your insta commits now at this point i would take guys off your board that you scouted that were red gems that you don't like start removing start looking through and looking through all the interests so look at what fights you don't want to fight so for instance as i go on down there may be a few guys that i was like eh don't you know he's a red gem don't really care for him maybe i'll remove him obviously we did sort by the guys we want most so honestly there's not quite a, there's quite a few little guys that would be here but that's the importance of scouting look through and see which guys are like red gems not too too slow not tall enough not quite my build not enough abilities etc remove those guys and then we'll get to the next part of this so now the next part of this is what i like to call playing cleanup so now you're going to want to do is after you advance that first week and you see where you stand with your recruits and you have your refreshed hours and then i can finally go put cells and everything on but before you do that go back to the prospect list i cannot stress this enough how important it is to always check this out sort by five star prospects and what i like to do from this point on is go over to the offer tab and sort by offers and you can see who's been offered and this is a great way to see who you can compete with so there's sometimes especially in online leagues where there might be like a red bus gem now if you're a five-star georgia type team maybe you don't care for that player but as a lower tier program and i'm trying to cater this video to everyone to keep that in mind as a lower tier as a lower tier school like a one to three star this is where you can come in swoop and play cleanup and as a top school if you want to just bolster your class flex get the best class in the league every time what i would do is add this one offer one offer and maybe some two offers but i, I would only do the two offers if you look at what their interest level is at the front so like for this one up here even for the one michigan's near the top this one 
South Carolina's closer up, but not as much as Michigan is. I would add a few of these, but really where cleanup does the best and the most damage is with the four stars. Look at all these four stars that go unclaimed. These are just free four stars. And I say free because no one else is offering them. So quite literally, the moment you give them a scholarship, you're going to jump everyone else and you tie that in with a hard sell and you're gonna keep moving above the board. Now come down here and what's really important here and what you're gonna do next is depending on your school. If you're a top tier school, like a Georgia, I'd recommend you still scout these guys because you also don't wanna be bringing in garbage, right? Guys that won't contribute or guys that are red gems at four stars. If you're a one to three star school, you don't really need to necessarily scout them. They're going to be free. So if, if personally, right, if I'm a three star school or I'm a two star school, one star school, and I get a free zero offer four star, the first thing I'm doing is just offering a scholarship and I'm saving my scouting points. You don't have many. You don't have many to scout. I'm just offering the scholarship because you want to cast the widest net in the sense, right? Some people misinterpret the widest net part. Some people think, oh, you're going to, you're going to stretch out your resources too thin. It's quite the opposite. I'm casting the widest net in terms of I'm going to bring in 10 four stars and maybe four of them are kind of trash, but for a one to three star school, it's great. You don't have to allocate a lot of resources to them because you're not scouting them. Now, when you come to start doing the cells and adding them, that's going to be a different story. So with that being said, go through top tier schools, make sure you scout, make sure you see if they're worth it. Make sure you see if these guys are even worth getting an offer for, right? Lower tier schools, just go offer that scholarship and get a head start. Why this is important is because while there's zero interest now and zero commitments now, a lot of people don't play cleanup week two. They come back around week four and five when some of their recruits commit and or don't commit, and then they start looking around. But even as a, if you're a four to five star school and you start playing cleanup in week two, you're pretty much guaranteed to get them. Someone catching up with you is going to be so hard. If you're a one to three star school, I've seen myself go in there with a one star school like Jack State and put an offer on a four or five star that was just sitting there. And around like week seven or eight, Auburn got involved and really gained some traction. And I think almost beat me out. It was so tight, but it was only because I started super late. So especially in an online league, keep in mind that the speed of this matters. If you're a lower tier school, get on the recruiting trail right away with these guys force the recruits through scholarships because it's not like real life. They can't say, oh, I'm a five star. I'm not going to Jack State. It's a video game and they're going to go there if you just beat everyone else out in interest and influence and no one else competes with you, right? So the first full week of recruiting beyond the scouting phase, I like to make sure I allocate my points. I go all in on the players that I definitely want. I don't take any chances. That part of this will come after this where I start to show you how I kind of mess around and I reallocate as we go to make sure I efficiently use all my points because that's the next key part. Officially using your points will continue that wide net to grow and spread while still winning. The worst thing you can do is allocate all your resources to a few losing battles when you could just allocate them to a bunch of winning battles and even pull back and unallocate them because you're winning them, right? So now that we advance, I'm gonna show you my methodology for kind of this third advance. What, what I like to do next is start to go through each individual situation, each player, and develop a situation and a mindset for how this recruiting piece is going to go with this player and start to develop a plan, right? So this guy, there's a few people interested. It's pretty tight. There's going to be a send the house the rest of the way type guy. Okay. Not taking my 50 off him. This guy as well. This one as well. This one as well. Although I'm only fighting one other person. So I am going to be monitoring this guy week to week to see if Tennessee ever pulls out of this offer. And if they do, I can then dial it back a little bit, right? Especially when we take a huge lead. This guy right here, I have a huge lead on. He's a five star. I'm going to keep it strong only because he's a five star. But as we get near the end of it and I see people just fall apart, that's where you start to pull back. So this is the next part of this is what I love to do here is when you start monitoring this, you realize very quickly how to reallocate points. So let's say, right, I have, let's just say you have, I have 60 points to spend on this guy, Obi, and I'm really tight against Tennessee right now, but I don't have 10 points to spend. This happens a lot, especially with lower tier programs and even with top tier when you're trying to cast a wide net. What I would do in the situation is after a few more weeks of this, I would start to pull this back slightly and potentially go with an attack of like maybe 40 like this, knowing that I still have a large lead and people are kind of giving up. And that's the key. When people start to give up, you can then go ahead and start to divvy it up because at that point you're not fighting. No, no one thinks they actually have a chance and they don't know what you're sending. They just see that you have an offer and your interest is increasing week by week. They just give up and hop out. And then any newcomers who are trying to play cleanup will look at that and oh, you have a huge lead. And that's kind of where you play the mind game. And that's especially useful in online leagues. So at this point, I'd add the extra 10 to this guy that I've accrued. And now I've reallocated some more resources here to keep the fight here, which I was already winning, but now even gonna get a bigger lead because I got the extra 10. And then on this guy, who I know I'm probably going to get because of this huge lead and they've all offered scholarships and I'm the one with the biggest interest, it's probably going to be me. 
and then i can always go back to it if i see people catching up so now this next method is one of my favorite little tricks see i call it like a cfp 25 hack per se one of my favorite little tricks in the game and that's when people start when they start to reach their top five schools you instantly want to go check the players like every week once you start to get your first guy in the top five always sort by top five off rip and do this little trick and check this out this trick is going to be the difference between landing recruits beating out better programs and being one step ahead of the whole league cpu and online included so you're going to do is see this right here right you want to go over to recruiting and you want to look at their motivations in the bottom right corner for this purpose i will drop the webcam so you can see it you want to check out what you have on these players so for instance this guy has three this guy has three this one has one now the threes are simple because when you go ahead and go do the hard sell you can just go ahead and hard sell you know exactly what their motivations are this is not one that you have to think about that's simple you got lucky and you have it right make sure you apply the extra 10 and or 20 that you can do there now this guy is interesting so with adding an action here you could you want to always try to hard sell as early as possible so to hard sell as early as possible you don't need three greens you just need to play the process of elimination game and this is my favorite method because a lot of other people that i've seen in leagues they wait until they get the three they wait until they know getting a hard sell ahead of everyone else gives you a huge advantage so if you go to hard sell here what you want to do is play the process of elimination game so pretty much you need three greens or two greens and a question mark to confirm it so when there's a red involved it's wrong so this one has a red involved it's wrong red involved it's wrong this one has three question marks which is wrong because it has no green this has a wrong one this one could be it because it's green and question marks this one has a red one this one has a red one this one also could be it this one has a red one this one has a red and so on and so forth right so we came down to the conclusion that it could only be this one or the two over here so here's what's important with this this guy needs at least another week to do the early hard sell the early hard sell can mostly really be done when there's two greens one green is almost impossible unless you're super lucky with the way it, it goes around and you have more reds but the early hard sell is what you want to keep checking for each and every week so we advance one more week and it's time to see who we could do the early hard sell on and you could always check like i said with one green i'm still going to check it out because if you get enough reds like we just developed a few more red emmet hooks you can go through and try to do the hard sell method on this again so if you look through right here we got a red we got a red we got a red this one could be it red red this one could be it so we still have two here so we got to move on from him so they're coming down to kaylin atkins we're going to try to do the cross simulation on him as we do come through it obviously gets easier on some guys some guys have more unlocked some have less unlocked it's really just the how it how it works out but if we come on down here these are all wrong wrong you need to get two green so this one right here this is the first one conference by light could potentially be it these are wrong this one's wrong this one's wrong x that one's wrong that one and that one so by default by process of nation the right one is the conference spotlight so essentially now you've done a hard sell early and the importance like i said in the, the purpose of showing the last one is that you're so close but there's only two so you every advance even though you only have two you want to keep checking even if you only have one you want to keep checking the moment you can get that on there we now have a hard sell a dm player and we can schedule the visit and that's all ahead of what other people could do you're now one step ahead and the importance of this is again the mind game the optics the philosophy behind it getting this week now advanced you're going to take an even bigger lead over tennessee so right now tennessee's probably sitting there thinking as a user especially and all the users thinking i'm losing this battle i don't know if i'm gonna stay in it i'm gonna give another week they're gonna throw hearts they're gonna throw a full pitch at them now we're doing a hard sell we're gonna schedule our visit and we're doing our extra 10 on top of that when this week when this week goes by you're gonna see a much bigger jump and at which point tennessee may drop out especially if you're on with an online user that sees it and it's like no i'm out and then at which point you're now in the top three almost and quite literally you're competing with one guy if tennessee drops out almost no other team has a chance at which point you can now go in there after a few weeks come back into your guy and just drop some of these right drop the drop the hard sell bring it down to like 25 bring it down to something lighter and now you can casually coast to this guy once everyone else has pretty much given up assuming that you have it and go allocate it elsewhere and now in terms of that wide net being weak not really you're almost locking them right you're, you're almost pre-committing them in your mind that you've locked other people out and now you can just go ahead and allocate to other guys that also haven't really been exposed to much offers yet and then beyond that that's pretty much everything i do those are all the methods that i keep in my head that i look at every single week to ensure that i get the best class and doing so i consistently keep landing great classes and it's so seamless i see everyone else like trying this trying that fighting for this this is like so mindless it, it is like so thoughtless it is the easiest way to just secure a great class just play ball and get a great class make sure that your program stays ahead of the game 
Now, I will say it is so important to monitor this week to week. When, I, when you're doing what I'm saying, monitor it week to week because if you, let's say you drop back on Atkins thinking no one joins in, and then like week eight, Alabama joins in. Now, while they're not going to catch up to you right away because you're so far ahead, they may jump up to like Tennessee's current range. And if you forget, they could very quickly with a good visit, a competitive visit, a complimentary visit with some good packages, could very quickly start to gain on you. And that might be problematic. So you got to check this each advance. What I like to do another thing, by the way, is especially in an online league, right before advance, like an hour before you're about to advance the league, refresh the page and go see if anyone's committed offers. Because if you would, if you go check this guy and no one else has added any offers, you're pretty much safe for that advance. If you see last minute someone has added an offer or if you guys have added an offer, bump it back up to 50, right? Don't play around with that. But that's a great way to check right before advance. Okay, no one has, no one's competing. Everyone's kind of opted out of this guy. That's great. I'm good to go with my format. But that basically wraps up the video. I hope you guys did enjoy. If you found any of these useful, please let me down below. What is, what is your favorite of the methods that I, that I mentioned in this video? What is the favorite one that you're using? And if you have one that I don't use, something that you consistently look at while recruiting, comment them down below and let me know what you have so that I can add it in some future video and of course use it myself for my own leagues. But that's about it. If this video helped you out, like the video. If you're new, sub and comment down below, like I just mentioned before. Thanks so much for watching. I'm out. Peace.